this is linear and angular speed. And um, much like what we were doing when we did arc length and sector length, um, the formulas, you'll see in just a second, they're down at the bottom of the page. Um, you have to have your angle measure in radians every time. So um, now, I will tell you this, you can do the problem without this, but it's a different formula. So the formula we're using is always in radians. You actually did sector length and arc length in geometry before you ever even knew what a radian was, but you used a different formula because you were using degrees. So this formula has to be in radians. And nicely on this notes page, they didn't give us any of the angle measures in radians. The reason they didn't is because you need to get used to converting them because I'm sure you noticed, you have to convert them all the time. That's like the first step in almost every problem on my life's class. All right, so this first little bit is to kind of help you understand exactly what linear and angular speed are. So it's, this is one of those little merry-go-rounds from a park you know the ones that your parents would put you on and they'd run around and you'd get really dizzy? People would fly off. Yeah, one of those. So dad takes Junior to the park. Dad likes to push his son on the merry-go-round until he gets dizzy. Holding onto a rail and standing eight feet from its center, dad runs three-fourths of a turn around the merry-go-round before he lets go. That takes him three seconds. Junior rides on the merry-go-round five feet from its center. So the first question it asks is, how many degrees is in three quarters of a revolution? Well, how many degrees is in a whole revolution? 360. And if we went, if you think about the unit circle, and you go three quarters of the way around, how many degrees is that? 270. 270. So there's 270 degrees in three quarters of a revolution. No, Do what? Makes sense. Oh, yeah. Makes perfect sense. So what distance does dad run during the three-second interval? That is an arc length. I'm trying to figure out how far dad actually runs. So we just do our formula for arc length, which remember is S equals R theta. Well, luckily for me, I do know the unit circle, so I don't have to convert. What's the, what is the radian measure at 270 degrees? Three halves. Uh-huh, three halves pi. So in radians, 270 degrees is 3 halves pi. So I can just plug my radius, which is 8, into my formula and find my arc length. Arc length. So my radius is 8, because we're talking about dad right now, and 3 halves pi. I could simplify that and leave it in terms of pi, and that would give me 12 pi. Um, but I am going to go ahead and get the decimal answer because that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know how far that is, so I'm going to figure it out. So 12 pi is 37.7 feet. All right, so then it asks me in feet per second, what is Dad's average speed? Well, he runs 37.7 feet in three seconds. So you just divide. 12.6. Thank you. 12.6 feet per second. Now the question is, is Junior moving at the same speed? No. He's moving slower. Is he moving slower? Um, what makes you say that? Because... If they're at the exact same spot horizontally, uh -huh. the dad is traveling more feet in the same amount of time that he's traveling closer to the circle. So True. Is so really, and you're not wrong, uh, but the question is, that depends on which speed you're talking about. Are you talking about his linear speed, or are you talking about his angular speed? Because they're not the same thing. His linear speed, you're exactly right, his linear speed is different. Angular speed is exactly the same. So, I don't know if it depends. So let's talk about the difference real quick between the two. Um, what's being measured when you're talking about angular velocity is how fast something spins. Depending on the position to the axis. Yes. How fast something spins or rotates or revolves. 
So we're talking about right at the axis point. We're talking about how fast something opens up right there at the axis point. The units that are going to be used for angular velocity are going to be degrees, degrees per minute or radians per second or degrees per hour. Anything like that. If it's an angle measure over a time, that is, that is going to be angular velocity. So you're looking, when you start reading your word problems, you're going to be looking for degrees per minute, radians per hour, something like that. Whereas, what linear velocity is measuring is how fast an object moves through space. So linear is just more in general? No, I mean, I'll demonstrate for you in just a second. All right. Um, this will be like miles per hour, feet per second, centimeters per whatever, minute, anything like that. So let me demonstrate for you the difference. Sorry, people on the video, you cannot see this, but I'm sure you're going to just be so sad to miss it. This is angular velocity. This is linear velocity. Difference? Get it? So, angular velocity doesn't go anywhere. It's just rotating around itself. So, and if you, well, we'll, we'll get to it in just a second. Okay, so here are the formulas. And, um... You see on linear velocity, they, they've rewritten it. So, remember what S is? S is arc length. So they did uh, arc length divided by time. And then they replaced arc length with the formula for arc length, which is r theta. So these are really the same formula. And then they replaced um, theta over t with omega. So it's really these three iterations of the um, linear velocity formula, it's really all the same thing. So let's talk for just a second about angular velocity because we you have... Uh, maybe not ever seen this, maybe unless I used it for this, this fancy W. That is lower, lowercase omega. The Greek letter omega. So it's one of the, uh, there's a couple, but it's one of the Greek letters that looks nothing like its capital. Because the capital omega looks like this. And only game ain't alive. So, so this is, and and, I mean, that looks kind of like an O, so that makes sense. And, I mean, it is like, where, is that? where do they get omega out of that? Who knows? Um, but this is omega, and omega means angular velocity. So anytime you see that, um, that's what you're trying to find, is, or that's what they mean, angular velocity. Every now and then, a, a different writer or textbook person will use this, V sub theta. And if you, if that's still angular velocity, because V stands for velocity, and the theta is telling you that we're talking about radians, so that shows you it's angular velocity. But most of the time, you're going to see omega, and it's going to be theta over t. And remember, theta is in radians always, so we're going to have to convert. And then our formula for linear velocity is going to be velocity equals r omega. So we're just using formulas; pretty easy. You can just plug in the same values. But I'll show you a trick to help you 